the mic was up. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for the joining of the um, presentation of the integrated AIM and Demon, um, which I will present to you what we have achieved and what we have um, deployed um, in our our sites, especially in Singapore. And I would like to give you an overview about the capabilities of the tool and also of the benefits from an ANSP perspective. So as you see, um, um, I'm from Frequentis. Sorry? Oh, be closer to the microphone. Oh, sorry. Okay, I hope that's now, now okay. So I'm from uh, Frequentis Orthogon. Um, we are, um, have uh, developed the integrated AIM and Demon, which I'm going to present today, especially and special focus on the benefits from an ANSP perspective. So let me just start with what I'm going to, to share with you. Um, I will give a, a, a brief introduction, especially also on, on AIM and Daemon, but then I will focus on integrated AIM and Daemon, what has been different to single AIM or single Daemon products. Then of course I will go to the benefits from an ANSP perspective, more from an operational perspective, and then also I will give an outlook um, how it will look in the future. Is that okay? Thanks. Let's start with the introduction. So arrival management systems have been well known for many years and been deployed at various places around the globe. Uh, it, it supports ATC controller in optimizing the traffic flow towards major airports and makes a maximum use of the available capacities, especially on the runway capacity. So you're creating advices, you are creating um, support for ATC controllers to handle the arrival traffic. Um, it supports uh, the ATC controller also by active advice generations. It uh, generates routing advices, turn advices. Uh, it supports also new concepts of runway utilization like the recat or the time-based separation. And for many years it's been also observed that it also creates beside support for ATC controller, also environmental benefits, and very proud, yesterday we received the Maverick Award about our AIMAN installations and the environmental savings that we could achieve with the system. So this has been very known for many years, arrival management and on how where to deploy. Now look at, at the departure management system. And the departure management systems are looking more from the traffic flow from the gates towards the runway. Again, the runway is a critical resources. Sometimes you're looking also into the uh, departure sectors where you have uh, minimum departure intervals, where you have spacing restrictions in there. But mostly it's been how to handle the traffic, the departure traffic from the gates towards the runway. Again, we have environmental benefits like decrease of fuel burn emissions, uh, increased performance, but also take into account things like departure slot coming from flow management system also departure management system, been known for many years. And we have deployed these systems around the globe at various places. Um, and that's been shown on the map. And what we also did is we are looking into what has been required from an IKO ASPO perspective, block zero, one, two, and also what has been required from a European Commission from deployment CESAR perspective. So if you look at these capabilities, ICAO requiring for major airports certain functions, certain capabilities from Amen and Demon system. It's uh, the time-based metering for the Amen systems where we have deployed this at um, Hong Kong, Toronto, Singapore, and, and the list. Um, departure management system, what we have deployed uh, for Gatwick and for Singapore. Point merge system, a special support for a um, certain airspace structure where we're giving turn advice, which we have deployed for Oslo and Istanbul the surface integration for Heathrow, the extended arrival management which we have deployed for NATS, but also now for Zurich and uh, Istanbul and also Toronto. We utilize RMP routes um, for Auckland and Calgary. So all these are ICAO ASPU functional requirements and for all of them we have operational references. It's not just that we are compliant to on paper, so we have operational references. Then there are also links to other areas of um, uh, 
um, the IKOS booths, which are related to Airport CDM, where Demon and Amen are contributing to Airport CDM. There are the vague uh, um, categories where we have RECAT EU and time-based separation, which we are supporting, and of course the network operation, which also been interacting with Amen and Demon. On the right-hand bottom, you see the integrated arrival and departure measurement. This is ICAO ESPO level two. And this is something that we have now deployed for Singapore, and which has been now put in operation. And this is the focus of today. So all the others are being pretty much isolated. All the other capabilities are either a arrival management capability or a departure management capability. Integrated arrival and departure management asks for more. And this is the topic of today. So let us now discuss on, on integrated AIM and DEMON. And I will start with an, um, I would say, a, a very prominent example of an extended arrival management. And we have all seen the savings and that we are starting with sequencing the arrivals from the Irish Scottish Centre, from the French ACCs into the London Heathrow. So this means we are extending our horizon. We are starting from the far distance with the arrival management. And I'll come to this later, why this has been important for an integrated arrival and departure management. But keep this in mind, that we are starting from 500 nautical miles out and starting with the sequencing process in there. And the next example I give is the one from uh, uh, Avenor, where we're having supporting a point merge system. We're giving turn advice. Turn advice before the aircraft turn to the sequencing leg down to the runway. So we are giving advices down to the minute. So from an AIMAN perspective, you're starting from 500 nautical miles out and down to a minute to 20, 30 seconds where you're giving the turn advices. So we are getting a credible accuracy in this entire stream of arrival traffic. But if we are now looking into an integrated arrival and departure management, we have to consider one specific fact. We are working on different time scales and different accuracy. When we are talking about a 500 nautical miles distance, we're talking about a one half hour um, planning horizon. There's no airport CDM in the world who give accurate departure times for one and a half hour in advance. But on the other side, we wanted that the aircraft been doing fuel savings 500 nautical miles out. We have to know what are the capacity being required for a certain arrival demand and a certain uh, departure demand. We are looking at this in a very isolated way and say, okay, these are arrival runways, these are departure runways. But effectively, in all installations of the world, we have traffic peaks either on arrivals or departures. So arrivals and departures are sharing the same resources, are sharing the same runway resources. And customers aren't want to have the departures offloaded to the arrival runway or arrivals should be offloaded to the departure traffic if there's either arrival peak or a departure peak. And you have to start with a planning process which works in different stages. You can't simply put arrivals into the departure sequence one and a half hour in advance. That's too much instability. That would not work. On the other side, if you are starting, for example, work on the pattern, which quite often has been used, like, for example, two arrivals, one departures, or three arrivals, two departures. If you're starting to implement such patterns 500 nautical miles in advance, on-route controllers get crazy to implement such, that, that wouldn't make sense, right? That this is creating too much workload for the on-route. So what we need to do is, and happy to share with you if, if you would like to come to our booth, what can we do to make it more precise and that we have a staggered approach? We have to look into traffic volumes, we have to look into different um, methods to do this joint planning, we have to do a, a, a flow control planning before we can go further down into a, a planning where we really say, okay, this is flight number one, this is flight number two, and these are the two um, uh, uh, arrivals with a departure in between where we're creating a corresponding turn advice. I give the example of, of Avenor simply to the fact because Avenor is using the runway system 80% of the time in mixed mode operation. There is not a arrival runway or a departure runway. They're using both arrivals and departures on both runways. 
And when you're giving a turn advice, you must know that there's either a departure in between or not. But you can't know it 300 nautical miles in advance. So this is all what makes the planning more complex and, and uh, what has been required to create a, a, a arrival and joint arrival and departure planning. Let me just go into the Singapore example. Of course, there are things like the common timeline that, you, that the ATC controller will see the same information on arrivals and departures. And again, there's the tower controller looking at the joint view on arrivals and departures, and there are approach controllers and departure controllers, and uh, especially the approach supervisors, looking at arrivals and departures. They still may want to have different type of information from the system, but they want to have a common view. If you're entering a runway slot, it should be sh shown immediately on the tower as well on the approach. And this is what we have done purely from an HMI coordination perspective. Beside all the efficiency that is required by an uh, integrated AIM and DEMON, you want to know all the actions on this runway system for both users from the tower as well on the uh, approach systems. And you can imagine that this development takes some time and we have started basically in 2014 when we are starting with Gatwick and uh, we are done with CESAR 1 with 684 on a coupled AIM and DEMON and we got the contracts for, for Changi Airport with a PDS system. So over a period now for seven years we worked on algorithms how to combine arrival and departure management and it becomes and this is what we are super proud of it becomes a CP1 regulation, CESAR solution 51, which was based on the results from our work with, so with NETS on uh, coupled AIM and DEMON. And it's our first operational deployment in Singapore, ICAO ESPO level uh, block two compliant. And we further developed these algorithms, of course, to further enhance the, um, the, the coordination and the planning. I'm now sharing the benefits, and the benefits is not what we are reporting as benefits. These are the benefits that we take from a paper that has been produced by CEA Singapore and which has been published by ICAO. So that's the best reference that you can get that the customers are been sharing this type of, of benefits. I'm highlighted four benefits, uh, key benefits of, of this. So on one is the collaboration and coordination. Of course, the reducing of holding, but also on the ground delays. Now you have a better balance on the runway resources. You have less congestions on the ground and in the air. You have a systemized approach on how arrival and departure traffic flow shall be used. That's a, a, a operanized and uh, productivity enhancement and especially support of mixed mode operation. If you're having mixed mode operation, which you are going quite often, if you have a, a multi runway system, you would like to have one runway, for example, designed only for to serve one terminal and you have immediately mixed mode operation. So this is also what the system benefits. So this is um, something which has been very well captured and published by, by Singapore. And um, at the end, I would like to give a, a short outlook about the future. Runways are not the only critical resources, of course not. There are other critical resources in the um, network and ATFM, and I put this in bold ATFM and network, which means these are the constraints either in the en route, the constraints at the destination airport. So these are connections that we're doing. Well, we have provided a, a, a white paper and a, a presentation about how to integrate um, uh, AIM and DEMON into ATFM solutions. So that's been uh, um, quite ongoing. If you're looking at the tower, you're not only having the runway as constraints, you would like to optimize the usage of the surface, like in a surface management system. I'm happy to invite you to go to uh, uh, the Frequentist booth where you see the Atrix tower pad, which is a fantastic surface management system. So this is the block number three, which is then the integrated AIM and DEMAN and SMAN. That's what we are doing um, together with our colleagues from us. But also from an airport perspective, integrated AIM and DEMON has been important because we connect this to the airport operation centers. And there's an initiative in Europe ongoing with airport, operation, uh, airport operations plan, which has been mandatory for, uh, I think, 28 uh, airports in Europe, where you're creating um, 
airport operations plan based on enhanced airside information. AIM and DEEM and support this. There are other tools which support this, like demand capacity balancer. So I'm inviting you also to the to visit the Net, NETS booth. We have worked together with NETS on uh, demand capacity balancer for the Heathrow Airport. And, and that was also being deployed uh, since 2017 for Heathrow. So integrated AIM and DEEM is not only to serve the runway systems, need to be also been integrated and interfaced to flow management, to surface management, and also to the airport operation plan. That's the outlook of, of the tool and uh, what we are doing over the next years. So I hope you find it interesting, you know, that what we have achieved, and, uh, and I've mentioned this a number of times, we are very, very happy with the support that we received from Singapore. Um, they have done a lot of work also during COVID crisis that was very, very positive for us uh, that we um, uh, can put the system in operation and also the, the operation experience that they shared, uh, shared with us. But I would really stress that um, when we are wanted to go for a more sustainable aviation, we have to look for every critical resource and to, hold, to solve this. Could not be that we are optimizing flight profiles in the on route and then going into a holding or vectoring because we have a unexpected departure traffic peak. That's not what we wanted to have in the future. And I think also ANSPs will be measured how efficiently and how sustainable traffic will be um, handled in the future. And I think integrated AIM and DEMON is a great contributor to this. And thanks to all for you for your attention and participating on the presentation. Thanks a lot.